Hi, uh, my name is Victor. I work here at Visa, and today we're going to go over Visa Developer Platform and how to connect to the VDB. If you're watching this video, probably you either have tried to connect or maybe are just curious what, what does it take. So both good reasons, and we cover in this video two ways to connect to Visa Developer Platform. One is called Mutual SSL, another is called XPay Token. Before we do anything, let's go ahead and register at Visa Developer Platform. So go ahead and navigate over to developer.visa.com. The registration process is super simple. All you need is email. So go ahead and register. I have already registered, so I'm just going to sign in. So um, as I mentioned, there are two ways to connect. Uh, one is called Mutual SSL. Let's start with that. Uh, Mutual SSL means that you basically check your certificate at the server side and also at the client side. What, el what that also means is that you have to create a client certificate. Uh, we try to make it easy for you and um, created an option of uh, generating certificate and the private key for you. So you basically have to select, when you try this for the first time, go ahead and select default option and um, and uh, we will do most of the work for you, so it's a little bit easier. So go ahead and create your first app. Uh, so notice this here offers you to save your private key. This is really important. Go ahead and make sure that your private key is saved. Now we can continue. And let's take a look at our app. So um, everything you need to get connected is right here. So private key you already have saved. This right here is the certificate. And you also have the username and the password. Before you can use um, any of the tools to try and test your connectivity, you need to combine your private key and your certificate into one file uh, that's called key store. Uh, there is a special tool for that called OpenSSL. Uh, if you're a Mac user, OpenSSL is already pre-installed on your system. So you can check it out by opening a terminal and typing in OpenSSL. So see this here is already pre-installed. If you're a uh, Windows user, you may want to go to OpenSSL.org and download it from there. So another tool we are going to use is called SOAP UI. So go ahead and download that. This is uh, the web service test connectivity tool. Uh, fairly straightforward to use, and it's also free. It's an open source project. So uh, probably the easiest way to test your connectivity is through this tool. Once you have both of those installed, and we now have our username and password, and you also now want to download your certificate. Here it is. Go ahead and save it. Notice that this particular browser I'm using offered to actually save the files. This is the kind of browser that you want to use for that. Some browsers uh, actually try to open those cert and give you the text version of them. Typically, that causes problems. So uh, if you see something like that on your browser, try to switch another to another browser. It's just going to be a little easier. And I'm going to move both files, both key and the certificates into the same folder just for convenience. And let's run the OpenSSL command that combines the cert and the key into a key store. If you browse to our Getting Started Guide, you will see that uh, everything is explained in a great deal of detail. Uh, this particular line tells you how to combine the key and the search into a key store. So I happen to have uh, this command already available in my command history, so let's just run it. Uh, make sure that you call your keys and your cert file names correctly. So in this case, uh, my key file name is key my test app 2 
and my cert name is just cert.pm. So let's run the command. Uh, it offers you to create a password. Go ahead and do that. Uh, type in anything you want. Uh, I'm just going to use test and test. Uh, but be sure to remember the password. You will use it later. So we're now ready to get into SOAP UI. Once you've downloaded SOAP UI and open it, this is what it's going to look like. So go ahead and create a new project. Uh, we're going to want to use our Hello World app, which is the easiest app on BDP. It doesn't have any inputs or outputs. So uh, our purpose here is to test the connectivity. And that's exactly what you want. You want it as simple as possible. This is the URI for the Hello World app. It's also available on the, in the Getting Started guide. So click OK. Uh, so SOAP UI created the sample project for us. Uh, the only thing that's missing is our credentials. So we're going to introduce, um, so we're going to add the username, the password, and the certificate. Let's start with the certificate. So preferences, SSL setup. We're just going to simply browse to the file we created. This is our key store. OK. And this is where you want to type in the password you've created for it. In my case, it was just test. Be sure to check requires client authentication. This is what actually makes the two-way SSL happen. So click OK. And save preferences. The last thing that we need here is to add the uh, username and password. This is done through um, HTTP basic auth. So let's go ahead and add new basic authorization. And see, this is where SOAP UI is kind of convenient. It just gives you a couple fields where you can copy and paste the username and password. So go back to um, go back to your application. This is the username. Uh, copy it here. This is the password. Copy it over here. And this is pretty much everything that we have to have. Um, we have our certificate, we have our key, we have our username, our password. You want to make sure that you uh, tick authenticate preemptively because that will make uh, the HTTP basic auth uh, actually work. So um, let's go ahead and run it. So it came back and here is the success message. If you see hello world and the timestamp, that means that you've executed this connection successfully. It means that your uh, username works, your password is good, and also, most importantly, your key store is created correctly. So you're now ready to take this and apply this to any development environment you like, and you can actually use it in any language. This particular test tool is uh, language independent. So, uh, but you know that your certificates work, and this is a great baseline. This is a great place to start. Okay, so uh, this is it for Mutual SSL. Um, it's not too bad uh, once you get all the steps correctly. And uh, on the Visa Developer Platform, some uh, APIs require Mutual SSL, but some other ones require a different way of connectivity, which is called XPay Token. So you will see it once you create your app, you will see whether it's Mutual SSL or XPay token or both for that matter. So um, we will go ahead and cover the XPay token now. Uh, it's a different way, of, um, different way of generating the credentials and also your SOAP UI setup is slightly different. So let's just go through that. On your dashboard, if you create an app that happens to use an XPay token, you will be given a different set of credentials. Um, XPay token doesn't deal with the certificates. It's basically username and password, except the, um, 
except the password is the token which is created in a very special way. So you will see in a second how it's done. So let's use one of the APIs that requires XPay token. This, for example, does Visa token service. Uh, we'll, we'll give it a nice, nice name. And let's create the application. So if you notice, it didn't give us the private key. It didn't create the cert for us. That's because it's a one-way SSL. But what it does give us, though, is the API key and a shared secret. So we'll use both of those in a second. Let's go back to SOAP UI and see if we can configure a project that uses XPay token. So this is done. Let's just create a new project. So uh, we'll use the same application, Hello World. Uh, but XPay token requires a parameter called API key. And we can grab the API key from, from here. Uh, this is also explained in uh, details on the website. So um, if you follow the getting started guide to a point where it talks about the XPay token configuration, it actually gives you all the screenshots. So you can either follow the video or you can always go back to uh, the website and look at the screenshots. Let's go back to SOAP UI and create, create the project. Um, so, uh, no username, no password this time, but we have to add a script to generate the XPay token because it's actually a digest of your message and concatenation of the shared key and the timestamp. So, um, the script is again available in the Getting Started Guide. This is it right here. And let's first create a test suite because that's the only way for us to uh, introduce introduce the script into the SOAP UI project. So generate test suite, click OK, OK. Here it is. We now want to introduce the new test step, which would be our Groovy script. Here it is. You can just use default names, it's not a problem. Uh, we can now copy this. So um, in here, it's a full script, but it uses um, substitute value for API key and the shared secret. So you obviously have to use your own. Let's see, go back to the website and grab those from there. be the API key. And this would be the shared secret. So while you're at it, you can take a look at the steps in the script. Um, it's nothing complicated, but you have to do it in the exact right order. So here, for example, you can see that uh, we actually uh, uh, we actually concatenate the timestamp, the URI, the query string parameter, and the payload, which happens to be empty in this case. And that's basically how you generate how you generate the XPay token. Go ahead and run the script. This is what it looks like. That's your XPay token. Uh, this now needs to be passed in a special HTTP header. The name of that header is XPay token. And so um, let's go back to the request and make sure that we add this new special header. So um, back, to, um, back to the getting started guide. Uh, probably a good idea to just copy those names, make sure that you didn't uh, have any typos. 
So that's the name of the header x dash pay dash token. Just go ahead and copy this. And the value for the header is going to be a special value because we're going to take the reference from the script. So the script actually created the token and stored it in, a, in an environment variable. So that's where we want to grab it. And this is basically the way to use those global variables in SOAP UI. But all it does, uh, it basically takes the XPay token that we generated a second ago. So that's the new header. Let's go ahead and uh, see if it works. Okay, so this is the success message. We again got hello world and a timestamp. It means that our XPay token worked. Okay, and so this is, um, this is the XPay token. Uh, we obviously just covered mutual SSL, so you now have a solid foundation to do anything and everything that you can possibly imagine. So um, is, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email us, developer at busy.com, and we're looking forward to talking to you. Thank you.